G'day guys, welcome to a short maintenance video on the van. Um, today we're actually going to be changing a spare tyre, uh, sorry, changing a tyre and putting the spare on and I'll talk through the reasons why in a sec. But before I do, this it shows the importance of regularly walking around your van and checking things out. So just yesterday, Movo was walking around the van as we actually landed it and spotted something looked just that looked a little bit wrong and a little bit out of place. So here we have it. <clears throat> Talk us through it, hun. Oh, I just noticed that the tire was bulging a little bit just here, and it just looked a bit odd um, compared to down here where it's a bit lower. It's not bulging, so I just thought it looked a bit odd. So I looked at the other tire and then mentioned it to you. Yeah, and then so as you can sort of oh. see with this bulge, there's a corresponding big whack on the tire here, and bulges are generally <clears throat> what come about from hitting road debris, hitting a pothole or those sorts of things. Another telltale sign that this is a little bit dangerous is most of the time with light truck tires, you've got about eight to 10 ply of, of um, materials that make up the tire tread. Whereas the sidewalls have two to four ply, but a lot of the lower layers actually wrap from the tread down the sidewall of the tire. The other thing that's really worrying is actually how spongy, and it's at 61 PSI this tire. So it's, you know, set, um, for road conditions but how spongy that bulge is and like any bubble bubbles burst so if we lose this at 95 kilometers an hour uh, on the highway we're in a fair bit of trouble so um, it's a pain in the bum to have to change it however I just you know I just don't think this is safe and luckily old Movo saw it so we're going to change a tire today but just a couple of things I wanted to talk you through in terms of safety before we actually do that number one We've got the stabiliser legs down on the van. So that's just in case, uh, just in case uh, things move or, you know, the jack drops or something like that, that um, those stabiliser legs are there to hold the weight of the van and they don't come crashing down on me. Another thing I'll show you really quickly is I've chopped the other wheel on both sides. So um, just chopping that wheel just means that uh, things aren't gonna move. So. I've got the spare tyre off, uh, ready to go. I didn't think you'd want to watch me taking a tyre off. <laughs> and I've also got the bottle jack in place. Now just on bottle jacks, uh, jacks, I've spoken about this on another video. Most people don't think about this until they get into a situation where they need to change a tyre. And then they pull their standard car jack that's generally only rated to about 1500 kilos and then realise that that jack doesn't have the strength to jack their van up which is why we always travel with a six ton bottle jack. When you think about these hybrids, they're nearly three ton. Um, so you're gonna be lifting at least one and a half ton on that particular wheel. I know six tons sounds like it's massively overrated, but it gives you the peace of mind that it's gonna be an easier job to get the van up. And it also gives you a little bit more height. The bigger the jack generally, the higher the height it will go. So I'll quickly just show you, I've got the jack set up. So there's a six ton bottle jack. Nice thing about our Jail Hybrid is it does have a jacking point on each of the uh, independent suspension arms. So this makes my job a little bit easier. Now the other thing, I've started to pre-loosen the wheel nuts. I always carry my trusty torque wrench. Uh, so I've uh, pre-loosened all of these, except for one. If you don't change tyres much, you've got to remember to do this step because while the wheel's still on the ground, it's much easier to get the um, to get the, the wheel nuts loosened. So don't take it all off, but get them loose before you jack that up. Otherwise it's gonna be awfully hard to, to get the tension on the wheel nuts. Just another point on safety, um, given that the van is landed and it's not attached to the car at the moment, just make sure that you've got your handbrake on again, just to stop any movement as you jack that wheel up off the ground. So safety first, it takes a couple of seconds, but it means you're much less likely to drop a van on your head which generally isn't a good idea, so handbrake on.
so there you have it um, I actually had to adjust the tension on my jack again just because it was slipping down a little bit just make sure that you've got your locking nut tied up really tight because there is a fair bit of weight coming down on it so as you can see I've um, finger tighted these nuts on the only other thing that I would say is if you're running a tire pressure monitoring system like I am this is an eye check tire pressure monitoring system if you're keen to have a look at those, we do have a discount code for them. So we'll put the link in the description. Just use our Empty Nest Adventure or ENA10 code and you'll get 10% off the full price of this uh, monitoring system. So um, because I've got the monitoring system, I know my spare sitting at around 58 PSI, which is exactly the same as the other side uh, uh, when they're cold. So um, well, I don't need to pump this tire up or let some air out. But just make sure you're checking the tire pressure on your spare it could have been sitting on the back of your van for a month if not six months if not a year <coughs> and um you don't just drive off without checking to make sure your tire pressures are right might be obvious uh so i'm going to grab the number six which is our passenger side van tire whack that on here and I'll get an accurate read. Now the next thing I'm going to do, talk these up back to 140, 145 Newton meters. Uh, actually, I'm going to drop the jack first. <laughs> oh. Try to keep your head nice and clear when you're doing this. Get it on, don't get too close and over. There you go. I'll take that jack out in a sec. Just while you've got it in place, double check that everything's all right here. That's when we've got it set to go the right way. Torque them up to 145. There we go. How good are ratcheting torque wrenches? have it ready to go